So our next speaker is Bren Boston, Dr. Bren Boston, and I have not seen Dr. Boston yet. Is Dr. Boston here in the audience? Oh, there you are. Very good. Okay, good. I can breathe again now. Thank you. <laughs> can everyone hear me okay? Okay. All right. Dr. Boston is uh, with the Akasha Center for Integrative Medicine and the Director of Pain Management and Sports Medicine. She's board certified in physiatry and pain medicine. Um, she's also a certified personal trainer. Gosh, I'm starting to feel a little guilty about eating that cheesecake at lunch now. <laughs> um, and she specializes in treating musculoskeletal conditions with a non-surgical approach. Um, Dr. Boston got her medical degree at Tulane University of Medicine and performed a residency in physical medicine and rehabilitation as well as a fellowship in pain medicine. Dr. Boston helps guide her patients through finding their optimal diet, exercise, hydration, and sleep needs. Dr. Boston. Hi, can you hear me? I'm a little short for the microphone. Maybe I should turn it down. Okay, okay I'm scared. Um, so I'm here to talk about the integrative medicine approach to neuropathy um, and uh, give you some insights as to what an integrative medicine practitioner um, sees neuropathy as and how, how they would treat it. Um, so what is integrative medicine? It, takes into account the whole person, and it's a combination of um, traditional Western approaches as well as complementary and alternative medicine approaches. So that includes um, botanical therapies, herbal therapies, um, acupuncture, um, thinking about the human body down to the, the um, hormonal level, the enzymes and nutrition. Um, so it's a little bit, bit of a more holistic view. Um, integrative medicine is not instead of um, a traditional Western style medicine. It's typically uh, people will do it in addition. So um, if you have neuropathy, that means you probably either have weakness or numbness or burning or tingling or some sort of sensory abnormality. And why you have it, it depends on which type of nerve is involved. There's all sorts of different nerves in our bodies. Um, if you have uh, pain or problems with temperature sensation, then probably your spinothalamic nerves are involved. If you have weakness, then your motor nerves are involved. If you have tingling in your fingertips and your toes, you likely have um, small unmyelinated nerve fibers that are involved. And we know all the different known causes for neuropathy. I'm sure everybody here is very uh, well familiar with them, but they can include diabetes, um, from the blood glucose injuring nerves, um, toxic trauma from chemo injuring um, healthy nerves, as well as um, taking care of the cancer cells. Heavy metals, uh, we're all exposed to heavy metals um, in our environment and in some of the foods we eat. Kidney disease, um, there's also mechanical injury, which is compression of a nerve, autoimmune diseases that attack nerves vascular issues that can affect nerves. Each nerve requires a blood supply. So if the blood supply to the nerve is affected, uh, that can be the cause of a neuropathy. And then of course there's a lot of idiopathic or we just don't know why um, there is a neuropathy. So anyone who has these kind of symptoms should be seen by a neurologist. So they can have a, a neurologic physical examination, the blood tests and a nerve conduction study um, and EMG. But what if you get your diagnosis and, and you get some treatments, but you just feel like you're not feeling fully well? You feel like your wellness is not optimized and there aren't enough options. 
So you might want to expand your horizons and think about um, the integrative medicine approach. So we think about nerves treating from the inside out. So in order to do that, we think about nerves as neurons down to the cellular level. So what is a nerve cell? It's a living cell, just like every other cell. Um, it's also electrical. It has electrical capabilities and properties. And it's chemical. So as far as um, neurons being li living cells, we just have to remember that there's a nucleus with DNA inside it. Um, there's mitochondria, which is the, the power source for all of the cells. Uh, we have to think about the, the different pieces inside the neuron and make sure that all of those parts are healthy or as healthy as possible. So the mitochondria, which are the power supply for all of our cells, including our neurons, and um, they're very important uh, because all of human cells will create free radicals in the normal metabolic process of living. Um, but the cell can't survive unless there's a steady supply of antioxidants that can quell those free radicals and the oxidative stress. Our bodies create a lot of antioxidants on their own, but we also need to get a lot of antioxidants through nutrition. Oxidative stress, um, it increases your risk for cancer, for gene mutations, um, inflammation, which has been found to be the kind of core cause of most chronic diseases, um, and for neurodegenerative diseases and neuropathies. So talking about the antioxidants, the master antioxidant in our body is called glutathione, and it's a tripeptide, which means it's made of three amino acids, cysteine, glycine, and glutamate. Um, you might be hearing more about glutathione. I think I even saw a commercial on TV about it. You'll see it in some stores, but what you need to know about it is that because it's a tripeptide, it's a protein, um, you can't take it orally and have it work because our gastric juices are very good at dissolving proteins into the individual amino acids. So you can't take it orally. You have to take it a different way, which I'll go over. So glutathione, it's very important because it's a detoxifier for our body uh, from the normal metabolic processes as well as from um, the toxins and pollutants that we encounter as well as um, in viruses and bacteria. So glutathione can minimize oxidative stress, um, it boosts your immune system, and the levels that your body will make of glutathione decreases with age, it decreases with stress, with infection, trauma, toxins, pollution, or a poor diet. So glutathione is um, one of the things it does is it's part of the two-step detoxification process that occurs in our liver all the time, every day. Um, you'll see it in the column of required nutrients. Um, in order to um, detox from just normal exposures that occur to us every day, you, you really have to have glutathione. So if you're not making enough, how can you get it? Uh, because you can't take it orally and have it be effective, you can uh, take it through an IV, an intravenous infusion. It can either be um, uh, an IV push or it can be put into um, a drip that includes other vitamins, depending on what your needs are. It can also be inhaled in a nebulizer and then uh, diffused through the, from the lungs into the blood supply that feeds the lungs. Um, there's other ways to boost your own uh, production of glutathione. I'm sorry about the uh, microphone. Um, eating cruciferous vegetables boosts your ability to make glutathione. So what is a cruciferous vegetable? It's a broccoli, a cauliflower, a Brussels sprout, a cabbage, anything in that family of vegetables. Those vegetables all contain sulforaphanes, and that is required uh, to make glutathione. There's also supplements you can take that will help your body uh, boost its own uh, production of glutathione, and that includes N-acetylcysteine, which helps with detox, um, alpha lipoic acid, which is important for mitochondrial health and energy production. It's important for detox and brain health. Um, for people who have a hard time eating a lot of cruciferous vegetables from either gastrointestinal reasons or just uh, they don't like the way they taste, you can actually take supplements that include broccoli seed extract and DIM, which are both 
phytonutrients from cruciferous vegetables. Taking turmeric is a very effective anti-inflammatory. Um, vitamin C and E help you recycle your glutathione. Selenium um, helps recycle and produce more glutathione. It's also important for thyroid health. And then your methyl B12 and your methylfolate, those are uh, methylation nutrients that um, help with the glutathione cycle of production. This is just an example of a, of a typical kind of Myers type cocktail where the glutathione would be put in. So typically um, it would have um, B vitamins, a lot of vitamin C, some amino acids, um, some magnesium, sometimes there's calcium, and then glutathione as well. So conditions for which taking glutathione is helpful, um, it includes uh, neurodegenerative disorders, um, people who need a uh, boost to their immunity, like they have uh, sick contacts at work or sick kids at home, or they're gonna be on an airplane with the recirculated air. Um, it's helpful for detoxification, for flu and colds, for liver disease, cancer prevention, and vascular disease. So thinking about the neurons as a cell, another thing to keep in mind is methylation. So methylation is a process that's um, important in cellular repair. Um, so the production and repair of DNA and mRNA. It's also important for detox, for neurotransmitter production, um, for formation of your healthy white blood cells, which is your immune system, and for protecting cell membranes. So methylation uh, is when you add a methyl group, a carbon with three hydrogens, onto an enzyme to um, perform a specific action. There's an enzyme in our body called MTHFR, which is methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase. Um, it's an enzyme that's responsible for methylation in every cell of our body, including our nerves. Um, so MTHFR is important because some of our most important antioxidants are not in the active form when we eat them in our food. Uh, they have to be methylated or a methyl group needs to be put on, say, folic acid and for B12 to become uh, methyl tetrahydrofolate and methylcobalamin. Those are the active forms. Um, methylation is also important for lowering your homocysteine, um, and homocysteine, when it's elevated, is correlated with cardiovascular disease and strokes. So it's very common that people will have a genetic variant in their MTHFR gene, so the gene that codes for MTHFR, which is an enzyme. 30% um, of the Caucasian population can have a genetic mutation in um, their MTHFR genes, and some uh, populations have even higher. And when you have these mutations, it can lower your ability to make glutathione. This is um, just one kind of illustration of some of the metabolic cycles that involve MTHFR, methylation, um, there's homocysteine, which when when methylated properly, it becomes methionine. Methionine eventually becomes glutathione. So how do you support healthy methylation for our cells? Um, well, first, you find out if you, if you have normal methylation already or not. It's a simple blood test. It's a genetic test. Um, through most, um, most labs, if you have insurance, it's just $45 to check this gene. And, um, It'll check two variants of the MTHFR gene, the C677T variant, which is, correlates with cardiovascular disease, and the A1298C, which can correlate with chronic disease. So you inherit um, one LL from each parent, and so if you inherit one healthy gene and one mutation um, for both variants, then your MTHFR acts only at about 60% of normal. Um, if you're homozygous, you get two abnormal copies, and you're operating at only 10 to 20 percent. Um, so, in order to <laughs> maybe I'll pause for one moment. So, in order to overcome uh, an MTHFR genetic variant. Um, you can take the pre-methylated forms of folic acid and B12. 
So uh, methyl tetrahydrofolate, methyl cobalamin, along with some of the other cofactors that were required in that metabolic cycle, uh, like B6 and riboflavin. And then you, you're able to overcome the fact that your body didn't methylate those nutrients. Um, and another thing you should do is just know that if, you're, if your MTHFR isn't working up to um, optimal, just know that you need to boost glutathione when you're stressed or ill. So up your cruciferous vegetable intake or get a glutathione infusion or take some of the supplements that help your body boost glutathione. So um, also thinking about neurons and how to improve the wellness and health of our neurons. We have to remember that they are electrical. Um, that information travels along the neurons as electrical information. And there's an electrical difference from the inside of the nerve cell to the outside. The inside is negative, the outside is positive. And when a nerve is activated, uh, there's a sudden change in voltage across um, the nerve cell so that ions move in and out and the depolarization moves just in one direction from the cell body to uh, the terminal of the, of the nerve. So this is just an illustration kind of showing how it is. So there's a negative charge inside the neuron. It's surrounded by positive charge. And the action potential moves in one direction. So just knowing that our, our neurons are electrical, um, there is a free and healthy thing you can do. It's called grounding or earthing. And there's actually been a lot of scientific research on, on this um, natural uh, phenomenon. So it's, the theory is that um, there is an abundance of free electrons on Earth's surface, and so electrically conductive contact of the human body with the surface of the Earth produces effects on your physiology and health. And research has shown it can reduce inflammation, improve wound healing, um, prevent and treat chronic inflammatory disorders and some autoimmune diseases, and it can slow or prevent um, reactive oxygen uh, species. And it's as simple as standing barefoot on dirt, sand, or grass for 15 or more minutes. There's also some companies that sell grounding pads that you can plug into your wall, but I feel like the actual contact with nature um, is a more effective means. Um, the other thing to remember when we're talking about our nerves and their wellness is that they are chemical. The way they communicate with each other is through releasing neurotransmitters, which are chemicals that um, are released from one nerve to the other. In order to boost the precursors to neurotransmitters, um, there are certain supplements that can be taken. So 5-HTP is a precursor to serotonin, um, as is tryptophan. Uh, L-tyrosine is a precursor to dopamine and norepinephrine. SAM-E is a precursor to all of them. Uh, this is just an illustration showing how the nerve works. So the, the nerve on the top, that's the nerve ending, and the nerve on the bottom is at, towards the cell body and the dendrites at the cell body. So the nerve on the top is sending the message to the nerve on the bottom. The neurotransmitters are little blue dots, and they're inside vesicles, and they get released into the synapse to the next um, nerve. There's, this just shows a little bit more about it. So there has to be a receptor on the accepting nerve that can accept the neurotransmitter. Um, the channel has to be open. Um, so several things go into that. Uh, supporting the chemical function of nerves, um, there are several supplements that can be helpful. Uh, it includes a, a B-complex vitamin, and that's especially important for people who are at risk for being low in B vitamins. So vegans, um, because B12 comes mainly from meat products. Um, elderly people, people who are on metformin, people who are on uh, proton pump inhibitors. Those are for like acid reflux. Another supplement that's helpful is alpha lipoic acid, which was previously mentioned. It's an antioxidant. It supports your microcirculation to the nerves, which is the vasonervorum, the little blood vessels that feed your nerves. And it can reduce symptoms of peripheral neuropathy. Several studies have shown that. Acetyl L-carnitine um, is important for your cellular energy production. It helps boost the health of the mitochondria in the nerve cells. 
gamma linoleic acid, uh, otherwise known as GLA or um, evening primrose, is it's an omega-6 fatty acid and it supports your nerve health. Um, once you've optimized the health of your neurons, there are um, other treatments to be considered that are more uh, focused on symptom management. So neural prolotherapy is an injection technique where a very, very tiny needle is used to inject a, a low dextrose, a, a low percentage dextro, dextrose um, solution just subcutaneously, around subcutaneous nerves that are um, causing pain. Uh, we don't know exactly why it works, but several research studies have you know, proven the efficacy. Uh, one possible mechanism is that it inhibits the release of substance P, which is a neurotransmitter that transmits pain signals from cutaneous nerves. One thing that's also been shown is that it improves the blood flow to the nerve. So this is just an example. So these are cross sections of nerves, and it shows you the vasa nervorum, which is the blood vessels that feed the nerves. So anything that inhibits the blood flow to the nerve, either atherosclerosis or vasculitis or inflammation, um, is going to inhibit the ability of the nerve to do its function. There's also homeopathic uh, treatments for neuropathy. Uh, Tremil is uh, a homeopathic compound that's arnica plus 12 other homeopathic ingredients. It's used often topically, like as a cream or a gel. Uh, it can also be injected if the site that needs to be treated is deeper. Uh, there's also uh, been a lot of research lately on low-dose naltrexone. Low-dose naltrexone is um, a medication you can take and it will increase your endogenous opioids. Our bodies make a natural morphine uh, that helps control pain. And <clears throat> low-dose naltrexone helps your body make more of it. Um, another way it works is it modifies glial cell transmission. Glial cells make up uh, the majority of the nerve type cells that are in your central nervous system. Um, and glial cells, when they're activated, especially chronically, they can cause inflammation and maintain a pain cycle. Um, so low-dose naltrexone helps to decrease transmission of the glial cells and therefore decreases pain. It's especially useful in people who have a central type uh, nerve pain, so like uh, chronic regional pain syndrome or multiple sclerosis uh, and even fibromyalgia. It's such a low dose, it's not uh, the commercially available dose of naltrexone, which is used for um, an opioid overdose. That dose is not the dose used in low-dose naltrexone. You actually have to go to a compounding pharmacy to have the, the low dose made because commercial pharmacies don't make it yet. Do I have time? To? Okay. So we're gonna talk just quickly about how um, integrative medicine clinic thinks about fatigue and how we would go about figuring out what's causing the fatigue. Um, all the normal things have to happen first, ruling out the common causes of fatigue. That's hypothyroidism, anemia, infection, autonomic dysfunction. Uh, we also look at hormone balance. Hormone imbalance is a really common cause of fatigue, whether it's your adrenal hormones, your sex hormones, or your thyroid hormones. We also look at your cortisol rhythm. Um, your cortisol is released by your adrenal glands. You should have a peak early in the morning when you wake up to help lift you up, get you out of bed, give you that energy. It should come down throughout the day and be lowest at night to keep you asleep. If your cortisol rhythm is off, either you're flatlined or you start having peaks of cortisol throughout the night, um, that can lead to fatigue. We also look at gut health um, and your diet, uh, sleep health, stress, and depression. This is just an illustration of all the different parts of your body that are controlled by your autonomic nervous system. It's often overlooked um, at regular medical appointments. There's just not time to think about all these different systems, but um, a dysregulation in your autonomic nervous system is important to look at. Um, as far as sleep, well, if your sleep is not good, you're gonna be fatigued. Um, figuring out what's causing poor sleep, you need to look at the adrenal gland. 
is someone having adrenal fatigue? Um, if they are, they can take an adrenal support that contains uh, like a desiccated bovine adrenal gland. So that's actual kind of natural cortisol uh, that you can take in the morning to kind of boost your own uh, cortisol level until your body repairs its adrenals and starts making its own cortisol production again. Some people have too much cortisol. They've got cortisol and it's just booming all night and they can't sleep. Uh, they might need to take uh, some supplements that help calm their adrenal glands like L-theanine or ashwagandha. There's also melatonin, which is an antioxidant. It's also released by your pineal gland in your brain and it works best if you take it with the lights out. So if you've tried it before, it didn't work. If you took it when the lights are still on, it, it doesn't work as well. It's naturally released in your body with lights out. Um, if someone's muscles are uh, tense, they, they have bruxism or they're grinding their teeth, uh, that can impair your sleep. So relaxing the muscles naturally with like calcium and magnesium, lemon balm, uh, passion flower, that can be helpful. Uh, a hormone imbalance is often uh, related to poor sleep. Um, in women, when progesterone levels start to drop, typically they'll get some insomnia, so just boosting a little progesterone, a natural bioidentical progesterone that's the same molecularly as your body makes, not, not the synthetic progesterone. Um, that can really help sleep. Um, all the regular sleep hygiene things that you've heard about a million times, um, early morning exercise is really important. That can help reset your circadian rhythm. So if your circadian rhythm's off, we really try to get up early in the morning and exercise first thing. Um, if all else fails, sleep is the number one thing related to your immune system. So if we have to use sleeping medication temporarily just to get someone's rhythm set, we do it. Um, the anti-inflammatory diet is important for every cell in your body and for longevity, as well as your health span or staying healthy the longest. Um, an anti-inflammatory diet, you can look online and see uh, Dr. Weil's anti-inflammatory food pyramid. There's all sorts of stuff you can look at, but in general, it's uh, heavy, heavy, heavy in organic uh, vegetables and fruits. So we all need to be eating more vegetables and fruits. Um, it's whole grains, not flour-based products. So grains are okay, as long as they're whole grains. Um, but you wanna avoid the things made with flour. So the breads and the muffins, and the cookies and the crackers. And um, avoiding dairy fat can also be very helpful in bringing your inflammation down. You want to have enough fat in your diet though, so you wanna get a lot of fat from olive oil, um, avocado, from low mercury fish. And you wanna avoid all of those um, partially hydrogenated oils and the trans fats. If you can, you wanna aim for organic just so you're not having to detox more pesticide exposure. Um, other things that you can get in your diet that are anti-inflammatory are turmeric, ginger, green tea, uh, rosemary. Um, if this is a really different way of eating than normal, then people benefit from doing a 21-day cleanse. At our clinic, we call it the Akasha Cleanse, but it helps people kind of turn around their eating. Um, another cause of fatigue might be if someone's deficient in a, in a certain vitamin but it's hard to know which vitamin. So there's a simple blood test you can do. It measures 33 vitamins and minerals um, and will tell you exactly which ones you're deficient in and you just you know, do a four to six month repletion of those and see if it helps. Um, so hormone imbalance, I talked about that briefly, but it's easy enough to check someone's hormones. Um, if they're really low and it correlates with their symptoms, then repleting with some bioidentical hormones can be useful. Acupuncture, um, it's clinically proven to decrease inflammation, it can decrease pain, it can decrease anxiety, it can decrease muscle spasms, especially if cupping is used, um, and it can improve energy. It also can't hurt you. I mean, unless you're on a blood thinner, it's worth a try just because uh, there's really no downside. And then mind body, so bringing in your mind body um, learning how to meditate is really important for your health. It can improve your health and your happiness and your satisfaction with life. If you've never meditated before and you don't want to take a class, uh, there's an app on the iPhone called Headspace. There's several really good books out there. I listed a few that I like. Um, and that, in a nutshell, is kind of the integrative approach uh, to neuropathy.